Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 20th, 2022, could on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new tropical cyclone forming in the Gulf of Mexico and the potential for two more systems out in the main development region. We got a storm alert out there, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is getting busy across the basin today. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have potential tropical cyclone for not yet a fully designatable tropical cyclone, and it is running out of time before it moves inland across portions of Mexico today. So this will be interesting to see whether or not this actually becomes a storm as indicated by NHC. We have a tropical disturbance out here in the main development region finally getting tagged by NHC. This will be pivoting around the monsoon trough and then kind of spit back out towards the west. We'll have to see if any development out of this wave could occur. And we have a new system behind here, another tropical wave that has garnered some model support for development. We'll have to see how that interacts with the overall environment over the next couple of days. So looking at potential tropical cyclone four, again, we do have tropical storm warnings that have been issued for two counties in far southern Texas, Port Mansfield, and of course, Brownsville, Texas. So these are the two areas included within the tropical storm warning. Again, the overall risk impact is expected to be elevated across portions of far southern Texas today. Again, mainly the threat will be some heavy rainfall causing some flooding, maybe some gusty winds, 40 to 45 miles per hour. The overall track forecast of this particular system has this moving inland sometime later today or this evening again right now. It is about 270 miles to the south southeast of the Rio Grande. Again, this is expected to become Tropical Storm Danielle sometime later today, but it is running out of time to do so. And if we actually look at the visible satellite imagery, we can tell that the storm is not really overly organized today. The latest recon plane that was in there is having a hard time finding any closed low-level circulation. There is some evidence that a low-level circulation might be evident somewhere here very close to the coastline, but it would not surprise me if another circulation tries to form further towards the northeast. Either way, you do notice that there is some tropical storm force winds being found here on the northeastern quadrant, and that is to be expected. But again, generally speaking, the main threats here today are going to be that heavy rainfall threat causing some flash flooding to portions of far southern Texas and northeastern coastal Mexico. Now, focusing on the rest of the tropics today, we have another system being designated out here in the main development region. This is now being uh, tagged with a 20% chance of development over the next couple of days again. It is coming off that monsoon trough here and will be ejecting towards the north and west as it does so. Now we'll have to see if any development of this system actually does occur because it, development, if any, will be quite slow. If we look at the GFS forecast, this is the 060 run valid for 8 p.m. this evening. We notice that here's our system right here. It is getting slung around that monsoon trough, and there's some energy off the coast of Africa that will also interact with this system. But we notice that it's getting slung to the north, and that's part of that monsoon trough just ejecting this piece of energy towards the north, so it's now north uh, of the Cabo Verde Islands. We notice that, again, it, it takes a while to consolidate here on the 060 60 run, and it does try to close off into presumably a weak tropical depression here sometime uh, on Monday going into Tuesday. But after that, it actually fails to develop anything as it nears the island chain. And we notice that we actually don't get any more uh, for we don't actually get any tropical cyclones here on the GFS forecast on the 60 run all the way out through September 5th. Now, I don't necessarily buy this forecast here. If we actually look at the GFS ensembles and we go look at that ensemble mean sea level pressure though, this tells a little bit of a different story. We do notice that on the GFS ensembles, there actually is the potential for the system to develop. We notice that there is actually a pretty good amount of low pressures here, some 1,001, 1,004, 1,010. So there is at least an area of low pressure that could go on to develop and that could be classifiable as at least a tropical depression out in this region. And then we have a new wave emerging off the coast of Africa within the next four to five days. Now, this has not actually splashed down into the Atlantic yet, which does give me some, you know, optimism that, you know, the models might be overdoing the, uh, you know, areas of low pressure right now. It might be overdoing the model support uh, because we've seen time and time again where these systems come off the coast of Africa 
and they lose model support. Now, we'll see if that actually continues, but there is at least two discernible features in the GFS forecast, at least by day five. And then there's this wave out here in the kind of the central and western part of the Caribbean at this time. This is actually a dead tropical wave we've been talking about for the last several days moving through the Caribbean. And what this will do eventually here, there is some members of the GFS, very weak, um, but there are some members of the GFS that do go on to try to develop this out here. Again, definitely toned significantly down from the last couple of runs here. But look at the 60 European ensembles. We kind of notice much of the same thing that our system, kind of our system right now that's being tagged by NHC does try to go on to develop, but not as great a model support for that. But there's even better support for a tropical wave that will be emerging off the coast of Africa within the next about four to five days. And then we're after some tropical development is certainly possible. And if we look out in the extended range forecast here, we notice that again, there isn't really a whole lot, but there is signs that the tropics will begin to heat up here. If you look at the overall upper level wind pattern here, it does go on to be pretty favorable in most of the, especially the eastern part of the MDR uh, on the EPS runs, the GFS ensembles, kind of the same thing here, looking pretty favorable uh, towards the end of that forecast run. So we're going to have to kind of continue to monitor how everything kind of plays out. But again, one of the main things that I am going to be interested, like here on the 06 EGFS, it does show a lot of this kind of these tropical upper tropospheric troughs basically cutting into the MDR. And this will be something to kind of keep in mind. Again, I'm not really sure this plays out. The GFS does have some of the model biases that are trying to kind of, you know, defer from what we're seeing out there right now. So we'll have to monitor that. But overall, it does look like the tropics are going to begin to ramp up pretty soon. And I do believe that it will stay that way for quite some time. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. And I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.